Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, on this wonderful Wednesday for what is going to be nothing short of another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. And as always, we have a lot to get into. If you are new to my channel and finding yourself on my videos for the first time today, don't forget to check out that subscribe button because I drop an update just like this one around 1pm UK time every single day to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space, but also the broader markets. And that's exactly what we intend to do in this video. We've got a lot to talk about. We're going to be starting off the video with some really interesting news from Senator Warren, who essentially has wrote to the Federal Reserve and is kind of begging them to cut rates at this point. Uh, and we've also got a recent tweet from Donald Trump talking about Bitcoin mining and how it's going to help uh, sort of maintain the US's dominance in regards to the energy sector. So we're going to be starting the video off there and then we're going to be crossing the Rubicon and we're gonna be talking about the kind of two macro options that we have in front of us. And by macro options, I mean economic options that are ultimately going to see markets do well or not so well. Now, option number one is that the Fed cut rates and ultimately uh, bonds get a bid, risk gets a bid, and we see liquidity cycles play out, PMI cycles play out, the Bitcoin four year cycle theory play out. That's the bullish scenario, or we're in the bearish scenario of yields go higher, the dollar goes higher, and risk gets crushed, having expected the rain to come, the rain being the Federal Reserve cutting rates, and it not doing that. Remember, markets are forward looking. So you're either in the bullish yields and dollar camp, which is bearish for risk, or you're in the uh, bullish bonds bearish dollar and rates come down and risk does well camp like Stan Druckenmiller is like we are um, and we're going to be talking about that because yesterday we had bond auctions in the UK and we had bond auctions in the US and they both were um, pretty healthy to say the least which means that people are bidding up bonds now bonds are adversely correlated with yields the dollar follows yields we'll explain it all I'm kind of maybe losing people here I know we lose a lot of people when we start talking about the kind of economic stuff but whether you like it or not crypto is now a part of the broader market ecosystem and there's levers that get pulled elsewhere that affect our industry our space the prices of the tokens that we watch uh, and the dollar is pivotal to everything and of course yields are really what drives the dollar um, and if we're looking at bonds getting a bid that means yields coming down which means rates coming down which is very much in line with everything that we're looking at technically in the crypto space so as always, we've got a hell of a lot to get into. Let's start things off with some really interesting news. And the first bit of news that we have for you, if we dive over to Twitter, is this is new. US Senator Elizabeth Warren asked Federal Chair Jerome Powell to cut rates. I never thought I'd be cheering on Senator Warren. In fact, I'm still not. Uh, this is from the 10th of June, so this is a couple of days old. Um, you can see, Dear Chair Powell, we write today to urge the Federal Reserve, the Fed, thanks for clarifying that, to cut the federal funds rate from its current two decade high of 5.5%. This sustained period of high interest rates is already slowing the economy and failing to address the remaining key drivers of inflation. Furthermore, the European Central Bank, which, like the Fed, has a mandate to steer inflation towards a target of 2%, cut interest rates for the first time in five years. It's time for the Fed to do the same. She is as clueless when it comes to economics as she is crypto. Um, let's, not, let's not extend on that, um, but you, you get where I'm going. But this was interesting. The Fed are going to cut interest rates. You've got 93 billion trillion dollars worth of debt that needs to be refinanced arguably the fed and the u.s government need interest rates cuts more than anybody um and we've seen the economy not do too badly now friday in the short term we had more uncertainty brought into the markets with a higher unemployment print uh, and also uh, non-farm payroll coming out as a beat kind of lessening the reasoning for the fed to cut rates and you've seen really what you've seen this year is a uh, readjustment of perceived or predicted interest rate cuts this year um, you know, that's shifted, the markets have shifted with it, strengthened the dollar, dollar's been going sideways since we had that first kind of print. My ultimate bet is that the dollar's gonna come down, yields are gonna come down, rates are gonna come down, and that's gonna see risk do well. And I think Stan Miller moving from NVIDIA down to the IWM is really gonna, um, or is really a kind of complementing um, feature to everything that we look at. So interesting news there from Sen Warren. Uh, let's talk from another Bitcoin magazine quote. Quite a good guy to follow, even though he's a Bitcoin maxi, and we think Bitcoin maxis are some of the most confused people in the world. If you seriously think the only application for a distributed ledger is Bitcoin, I don't know what to tell you. 
It's like saying the only car you should drive is a uh, Ford Ka. You know, I'm not comparing Pixel to a Ford Ka. Let's let's pick a better car. Um, I don't know a, a Porsche 911. Everyone has to drive Porsche 911s. That's the only application for um, or hatchbacks. Even better. Let's not choose a specific type of car or brand. Everyone's got to drive hatchbacks. That's what Bitcoin Maxis are saying, and that's the only application for an engine. I don't think so. Anyway, um, horses for courses. Think uh, different distributed ledgers do different things. We can we can go down that rabbit hole whenever uh, with anyone. Um, so just in, Donald Trump says we want all the remaining Bitcoin to be made in the U.S. Born in the U.S.A. That's what he's saying there. Uh, it will help us be energy dominant. Perhaps maybe something like Energy Web might help that also. So this is from Donald J. Trump. A vote for Trump. Bitcoin mining may be our last line of defense against a CBDC. I mean, I'm confused with that. I, I you know, I, I'm actually not a Trump hater by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm not, perhaps, although you can probably tell from these videos, going to give my political view. People get so triggered if you say anything positive about Trump. Uh, and actually, I think there is some positive things to say about him. Um, they get unbelievably triggered. And you know what? I don't care. This channel isn't for everyone. You know, what people want is a personality-less individual to be presenting these channels. And we try and stay as apolitical as possible. Um, but I don't I don't mind the guy. Um, that's just my own personal opinion. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Biden's hatred of Bitcoin only helped China. Actually, uh, I think to defend that comment, we've just upped tax on uh, Chinese EVs by, I think it's 38%. I say we, I'm not from the US, I'm UK, as I'm sure many of you can tell. Maybe it's because I don't know what I'm on about. Um, so Russia and the radical communist left. We want all the remaining Bitcoin to be made in the USA. It will help us be energy dominant. Now we have two Bitcoin miners. We've got a number of Bitcoin miners that we watch like Marathon and things like that. And we've often brought them up on the channel and said, look, technically we were very bullish on these uh, products. And ultimately, that gives us a broader confidence to be bullish on the space. If Bitcoin miners are going up, Bitcoin's not going to be going down in that period. If Coinbase is going up, you know, Bitcoin indexes are going up or crypto indexes are going up. Um, I don't really get how that's going to make them energy dominant. Um, I think in politics, people will say whatever they need to to get them voted. Um, but I do think we are moving towards some sort of communist style. Uh, I don't think people need to put the left and the right in that. What they want is to put you in boxes so that you look at the person in the other box and you fall out with them rather than all coming together and going, this is BS. Um, I don't know how it's a defense against CBDCs. I mean, Bitcoin is an option against them. We have seen anti-CBDC bills passed. I think Ripple's going to play a massive role in actually maintaining the US's dominance in regards to a dollar stable coin. Um, we can talk about that and we'll talk about that this evening. So do stay tuned for that. I know, you know, Ripple's got a massive community out there. So just some interesting things I thought I would share. The next place that I want to go to is talk to you guys about what's kind of happening on the macro. And let's deal with the short term, what's happening today. L likely many of you are going to be watching this video once we've had CPIs. Um, maybe not before the Fed meeting. Now I've got a meeting with my Patreons tonight. So we'll be sort of sat whilst it's happening, talking about various things as we always do on a Wednesday and, and, and Sunday. Um, but let's talk about what's taking place in the short term. And then we'll talk about the broader macro in regards to why markets are doing OK today and why the pullback might be over, because we're getting more clarity in regards to based on bond auctions, which people don't even pay attention to and what that means for yields, thus the dollar. We'll, we'll cover that. I want to really my goal on this channel is to make sure people are as financially savvy as they can possibly be and have if my dyslexic English self can um, propel it the best kind of understanding of how all this works and where crypto finds itself in the mix, because I think crypto is the ho fastest horse in this race. But today we have Fed minutes and inflation report both hit Wednesday, which is today. Uh, inflation's coming out in about an hour um, and or it'll be about half an hour from when this video is released. And inflation report both hit Wednesday and the impact could be huge. Yes, indeed. So CPIs are expected to come out at 3.4. Month on month expected to drop to 0 0.1, having previously been 0 0.3, which would be good. Um, a similar print, it's not amazing news. A lower print, good news. Higher print, bad news. That's going to strengthen the dollar. Lower print will uh, essentially weaken the dollar. And it's all about the dollar. We'll talk about that in just a second. So obviously, this is taking place at 1.30 UK time for the uh, CPIs. And then, you know, you can see the sort of forecast. Uh, I, yeah, we're doing a little bit of work on, on, on oil, which the dollar is very tethered to uh, i'm kind of bearish oil actually and i think 
I'm bearish the dollar, so maybe I'm just trying to fit my narrative here like we all do. Um, but then, of course, you've got the uh, Fed statement, economic production, and, and press conference, which we'll be watching tonight and, of course, reporting. We want to start broadcasting this sort of stuff live, reporting to you guys uh, tomorrow morning. Let's talk about what took place yesterday. So this is U.S. 10-year Treasury notes. Now, let's just establish first what's driven or the correlation between yields we're seeing a bid for bonds remember when bonds go up yields go down yields have been in a 40-year bear market bonds have been in a 40-year bull market because of qe and the expansive nature of the system and the, and the bid behind things so the fed has withdrawn their hand however the treasury has largely picked up the slack so we've had a kind of killing of qe uh, qt into qe and also at what point does qt upping interest rates become qe because of the massive debt burden that you have uh, for an entirely different video um but let's just establish the fact that if we look at two-year government bonds lead interest rates and we've got it in a nice bitcoin orange just to confuse everyone we'll take a 30 week and moving average after we'll reintroduce it shortly um you can see how correlated these are um, and the 10 year is very correlated with the dollar. Can you see the, the similarity here? You know, rates down, yields down, dollar down. And we have a broad thesis. Can we leave these on? No, we can get rid of this. That actually the dollar is coming down to the lower channel of a channel you've been in since 2008 when central banking and um, the government basically became one. And this is like you're seeing Senator Warren say, we need to lower into, the government should have nothing to do with money. That's my belief. That's why we're in so much problem. We are moving towards a communistic style system. We're already in one in the, in the West. Um, I say that and people say, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're on about, it's capitalist. There's nothing capitalistic and free market about a world where the government has every single thing to do with every single thing. They tax everything, they have, you, you try and set up a bank or a business without going through the rigmaroles and then coughing up you know a large percentage of your profit um and it's, by the way it's not as bad as somebody that likes to travel it's been around a lot of europe there's a lot worse places in europe in terms of tax in terms of property you know people talk about how expensive it is here in the uk go and travel some of europe and try and buy a house a flat over there will cost you what it runs you here in the uk anyway i digress as always um so there's a correlation between yields the dollar and interest rates yields lead the fed fund rate which leads the dollar the dollar subsequently leans on risk when the dollar goes up risk goes down let's do this because this is stuff they don't teach you on other crypto channels for the simple reason that they don't understand it and i didn't understand it either i had to follow people far smarter than myself and they're, they're still far smarter than me by the way um, people like francis hunt the market sniper amazing guy to follow has taught me an unbelievable um amount when it comes to the markets and, and the kind of levers of them um, but as the dollar goes up here risk went down and it's because of the reasoning behind why the dollar's going up and what the, the broader ramifications of that are when the dollar topped out risk went up sideways period certainly with this recent high risk kind of uh, not doing too well but yesterday there was a slap in the face in regards to the demand that we saw for us bonds um, this is an article from Zero Hedge from Tyler. Uh, you can follow him over on Twitter. Good guy to follow. Tell him all in crypto sent you. Uh, Stellar 10 year auction sees surge in foreign demand near record stop through. Unlike yesterday's subpar, talks about the three year. Uh, the high yield stopped at uh, something, something, something. It talks about the kind of record demand and what subsequently this has done for. Um, bond yields so if we go over to that and we take all of this off to not uh, we can actually leave some of the risk on because y you're kind of looking at a similar thing um where's my yields so if we do two year yields and we take it to a daily time frame we should probably take something you can see this is what happened with yields yesterday so this real spike up on friday's unemployment data and uh the dollar did too yields and dollar are basically a similar thing or in a, they're in an anti-risk category let's 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 put it that way um friday we saw that that's why your markets got hit quite hard obviously crypto takes the brunt of it and now we're seeing oh actually and today's going to be big for data and economic predictions people are bidding up bonds which means they're betting on yields coming down 
If yields come down, people that seven trillion dollars in money market funds will flood back into the markets. There's a whole fundamental reason to why we discuss all this. But um, let's get rid of this. We don't need this on anymore. You can see that this is what yields did on the back end of bonds getting a bid. Bonds were getting a bid. I'm ultimately bullish and have said I'm bullish on the bond market, which means I think bonds are going to go up. The historic correlation between gold, between the S&P is bonds go up with the markets because they're a representation of an add into the system and a bid under it. And if you look at all this volume here, I would say this is a bottoming period for bonds. And if we put gold up, we also looked at this. Just a real quick few, we're bringing in everything here. The historic correlation between bonds and gold is that they move together. And there's been a disconnect because the Fed hasn't been stepping in. Um, but they've been continuing to issue more debt. And this is why you see banks at those record losses. Um, they're going to have to step in eventually. I think the markets know this. I think where yields are going know this. Um, you know, ultimately, there's going to be a shift back into bonds. And we're getting confirmation of that, not just in the uh, US, which ultimately signals rate cuts. Remember yields and uh, Fed funds and dollar, bonds and risk. Um, there is a bit of a disconnect there in regards to recessions and, and people go to bonds as a safe asset. Um, but I'm not, and, and maybe a little bit of that could have to do with the, the unemployment rate, but that's a little bit, you know, we're getting into kind of the weeds of things there. But UK also smashes bond demand record with 110 billion uh, order book. Um, orders beat the rush for UK's debut green bond in 2021. So we ultimately think that our broader prediction on everything is that they're going to bring down interest rates. You're either in two camps, like I said at the start, higher interest rates, high yields, bad for risk, lower interest rates, lower yields, bid in the bond market, good for risk. And actually that follows things like liquidity cycles, it follows PMI cycles, the, the second option, the bullish option, and everything else that we're looking at technically. Uh, to finish on a little bit of technicals in regards to Bitcoin, it's again, I think benefiting from what obviously took place yesterday and what the bond market is signaling more broadly. And I hope I've made a, a decent attempt at explaining all that because it's not the easiest topic to follow along with, um, but it's integral. You know, I still think this pattern could be in play and a smashing of the sort of 71, 72,000 mark is likely gonna see a run to 91. I think, you know, crypto more broadly when we look at it is in a good spot right shoulder for our inverse head and shoulders on turtle two that's going to take us to 3.8 trillion dollars still looking likely um so on and so forth and we looked at a lot of crypto sort of index funds in regards to actual tradable products hang in there guys we can talk about bitcoin miners we can talk about everything it all points towards the same direction and we spent quite a lot of time today talking about the kind of macro picture where we think it's at where we think it's going what yesterday's bond auction signaled uh, and everything in between. So that's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Also, let me know what you think about the setup. It's not perfect. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, I think we've got the subsidence. Subsidence? I think we've got the ideas and the uh, sort of subsidence behind the content. We just need to up the production to take on these larger channels and ultimately become the one-stop shop for your crypto and financial information. Uh, so hopefully you guys can help me achieve that goal and vision uh, lots coming this year um, along with what i think is going to be a great time for the cryptocurrency markets and markets more broadly so that's it from me ladies and gents if you've enjoyed the content like is always appreciated so is a comment and i look forward to seeing you all in the next one see you there thanks for watching have a wonderful wednesday